Hi, my name is Joshua and I work as a welder slash first class helper at Universal Fabricators. Generally as a helper, all I'm supposed to do is go out there and get the materials assembled, do a small tack to get them all held in place, and then a more experienced welder comes behind me and fabs up all the materials to speculations and everything they have to have. My typical day, work day out here consists of fitting, welding, and bolts and flanges. Usually, the first thing we do when we get to the job site is we prepare the trucks, get everything loaded up, make sure we have everything we need for safety. It's usually five steps for safety. We have a hard hat, safety glasses, earplugs, jumpsuit that is fire resistant, and steel toed boots. We need that every day. From there, we get to the job site, we fill out a job safety analysis. That way, we know everyone's going to be safe. We all have our ideas together, and we're all working on the same page. From there, we each get a task. Typically, being a first class helper slash welder, I'm always up top where the fire is at. Generally what we do is we take and we put two pieces of metal together. We're going to fit it, get it in the right angles. Everything's got to be specced out. Correct angles, proper procedures. You got to make sure it's not coming in contact with anything, causing any kind of hazard. And then we'll, we'll weld. And welding is just a process of taking electricity and bonding two metals. From there, we don't always weld. Sometimes we have to build things through bolting, flanging, um, Machining parts, that's another part of our job. Um, you know, the, the I-beams don't come in already prepped for what we need. We have to make for the job. Another thing on the job site is our work hours can range from seven days a week, 16 hours a day, to what I'm at right now because it's slow. I'm working 10 hours a day, four days a week. Some shops are eight hours a day, five days a week. But here at Universal Fab, we're 10 hours a day, Monday through Thursday, um, opportunity for overtime, and I'm always either assisting another welder during those days or at the shop doing whatever. We always have work. That's great about this field. The stress levels here, it can be pretty bad at times. I mean, I work with the same guys every day, usually for years on end. I've been working with the same guys for three years. And, you know, a lot of times this work is hot. I mean, you have metal that's 400 degrees. I mean, it can, it can get you pretty heated. You usually don't get along all the time, but I mean, there's ways to get around stress, like making sure you drink enough water, focusing on the job, and coming here to do what you got to do. Just try not to bring your work home stress from work to work, and usually we'll get along just fine. It's kind of a drama-free environment. There are no baseline requirements in being a helper or a first-class helper, but you, generally you're not going to get a job somewhere like I work without a high school diploma or a GED. Generally, you come in, you have no experience, and you earn your certifications, and you earn your money. Your money goes up as the more you know. You're, you are what you know. Most of your certifications that you'll gain, you'll gain on the job. For example, I had to get a forklift certification, a lull certification. Um, those are all on the job training. Every place you go, you will have to get recertified for lull, um, man baskets, cranes. Crane is something you do have to go to school for. Um, Generally, in my position, I learned to weld on the job. I had first class welders, second class welders, first class fitters, all teaching me how to fit and weld. Um, some things you will have to get certified on. You're going to have training seminars where safety comes in and they teach you how to properly rig for a crane load or anything you would like to pursue out here. There's a, all you have to do is pretty much tell your foreman what you want to be able to do, and he'll put that on a list of things to accomplish for you. For example, I wanted to learn how to use a torch. Well, he put me through a class where I had to learn how to cut with a cutting torch. I had to learn how to properly weld because you can't go on a job site not knowing how to weld. Everything you do has to be certified. Here we take and we do a plate test for a vertical and an overhead weld. And we're trained on the job. Usually it takes between six months and 18 months to learn how to weld. But to be good enough to weld in the field is a totally different situation. Because sometimes you'll be in a hole that's two foot wide with your arm reached out straight over your head trying to weld. And that's one of those things you just gotta learn on the job. N no place certifies you in doing that. They just, you have to learn it. So there's a lot of certifications that we put on each other that are, they're not always official, but most of them are. Um, I had to take a class on breathing apparatuses for when I go into a 
manhole or something along those lines where we're going to be creating argon gas from our cutting torch. Um, they, they want to make sure that you know what you're doing because nobody wants to lose anybody out here. We're a family, blood or not, and you just you got to push through certain things. Um, a lot of the others, there's one other certification you're going to have to have. It's going to be if you're operating any large trucks, you're going to have to get your CDL. Generally, if a company needs you to have a CDL, they'll pay for it, but that is a certification through the state that has to be renewed every two years. Some of the best parts about my job, um, we work, we do different things every day. It's never the same thing. A lot of people have desk jobs, they have to come and do the same thing every day. I never know what I'm gonna do that day. It's, it's always a surprise. It's always different and always keeps me interested. I'm always learning. That's the best part. Sometimes you have great times of the year, like spring, the weather's awesome. Fall, the weather's awesome. And then there's summer and you feel like you're dying of heat stroke. Um, another good thing about our job, Generally, when you're on a job site, they provide food, water, um, things like that. So it saves you a lot of money. You get to travel a lot. That's another really great thing about this job. It's not the, the scenery changes because sometimes it's not even about doing different things every day because you can do different things every day in a shop, but it's about being somewhere else, not feeling trapped to where you're at. Um, another good thing about our job is, you know, the physical demanding part of it keeps you in shape, but that can be a drawback because it could be the reason you have a bad back when you're 50. It's a pretty relaxed situation. I mean, when we're on the job site, it's not aggressive, people aren't brutally yelling down your throat, um, you're not just getting screamed at, but there's a drawback to that too. I mean, in a relaxed environment, you have to be mentally ready for the safety risks that are going to come at you. Like, you're going to burn your hand at some point and it's going to blister your skin off. You're going to have something fall on you that's heavy and doesn't feel good and you're going to bump your head on a pipe that you're crawling under. It's going to happen and generally in our line of work, it's going to happen with metal, which doesn't feel good, but I mean, you get to go Work your butt off every day, um, work for yourself and not get yelled at, but one of the worst things, I'd say if I had to name one thing that I just cannot stand about this job, it would be some of the holes we have to go into. I'm like one and a half foot wide hole, I mean, I'm not a big person, but some of the places they put us, you, you're sitting in that hole for two or three hours in an awkward position where your arm is just, it feels like it's going to fall off, so that sums it up. For anyone who's looking to be a helper, welder, anything in the construction field, um, I would strongly advise that you go to potentially a trade school. Make sure you finish high school or wherever school you're currently enrolled in. Um, try to get some welding experience. Or if you want to be a welder, you need to go out there and practice welding. Get some tack, at least be able to tack. Because if you come out here with no experience, you're going to start at the bottom. But there are ways you can pursue it. Like there are technical schools all over the country that will gladly train you. You can get grants to go into them. And if after a thousand hours, you'll be a certified welder when you show up on the job, making top pay, skipping over where I'm at, and uh, not starting out at the bottom. A lot of times, if you just take some practice or go online and look up how to grind or prep for welding or any, any kind of experience you can give yourself. If you have, and when you go to apply for a job, if you've ever used a table saw, tell them you've used a table saw. If you've ever used a lathe, say, I have used a lathe. Write down every piece of equipment you've used. Write down every work reference you've ever had. If you ever unloaded trucks for a grocery store, that's significant because you might have run a forklift or any kind of mechanical machinery. Tell them all your experience because when you fill out that job application, it's going to determine what they start you at. And starting out at high dollar is a lot, a lot quicker than having to earn your way up the ladder. Um, you also need to know that if you're going to do this kind of work, you have to be the kind of person that can wake up every morning at four o'clock, drive a hundred miles to your job site. You know, sometimes you get paid for that. Sometimes you stay in a hotel. You have to be ready to do exactly what they need you to do. You can't be, oh, my tooth hurts Tuesday, I can't show up. You won't last. You have to be the kind of person who will motivate yourself to get up every morning and come do your job. Because when you get out here, no one's standing over your soldier watching you. You have to do it yourself. And, but it's great work. I enjoy it. And look forward to seeing you on the job site.